Hello and welcome to another broadcast of Deep Cough in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez from IdentityNetwork.net. Hey, this week I want to take some time to talk to you about knowing your season. I think it's very important. I have a lot of people who email the ministry and write into us and, and always ask us, I don't know really what season I'm in. I don't know if I should, you know, if my season is to reap, my season is to sow. I don't really know what I'm called to do in this season. I want to read to you a passage that many of you know. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. And it says, There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven. Reading from the NIV. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. Now, one thing I want to share with you is this. Many of you are wondering, Lord, what season am I in? The Bible talks about that we have the sons of Ishakar anointing, which means the sons of Ishakar they knew how to discern the seasons and the times of God. And many of you right now, I feel like you're in a season where you're hearing different teachings, you're hearing different sermons on, now is my time to war, now is my time to do this, now is my time to do that. Let me tell you something. First of all, in the timing of discernment, in a time of trying to figure out what you're called to do, you are not called to look by what you see or feel. In other words, many people right now are looking towards you know, President Obama. They're looking towards what's going on in the government. They're looking at economy. Let me tell you something. Discernment has nothing to do with what's going on in the natural world. You cannot look and say, well, you, say, you hear something that the government's doing, or you hear something that the president's saying or doing, therefore it is your season to do this or that. Let me tell you something. You have got to learn true discernment. It's not by what we see or feel. It is by the leading of the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit will tell you, now is your time to sow, now is your time to reap, now is your time to do this, and now is your time to do that. Let me give you an example on discernment as opposed to natural discernment. I tell, tell people all the time that you know, in an economic crisis, it's actually, they say, a great time to start your business. And most people who start their businesses, the statistics say that a person that starts their business in an economic crisis will pretty much either they'll make it or break it, but if they survive, they'll be here for the long haul. Because if you can make it through tough times, then you're going to be making it through the good times as well. So therefore, do I use discernment for that area or do I go by the natural principles of the world? In other words, the natural principles of the world says it sounds great. But when it comes to other things in the kingdom, we can't look at the natural things to say, well, I feel I need to do this and that. True spiritual discernment does not go by what the world does, what the world uh, says to do. So a lot of you right now have approached me and said, well, you know what? President Obama has gone against Israel. President Obama is saying this. The government's doing that and this. Let me tell you something. I don't care what he's doing. You first of all have to get your priorities straight. And that is as a Christian, the Bible talks about you are to honor and you are to obey the governing authorities over you. I tell people this all the time. For those of you who to disrespect our president and disrespect the government, I see no integrity in you whatsoever. Because of the fact, I look at the Bible and I say, God has told me to love. God has told me to pray for those in authority. See, your responsibility is not to find somebody to blame for your own problems. Hello. Your responsibility is not to look and say, the government has done this, so therefore I am going against the flow of them. Or President Obama has done this, so I'm going to blame him for what I'm going through. Let me tell you something. If you lost your job during this season, my heart breaks for you. I know it's tough. I know it's rough for you. But let me tell you something. The Bible says, not Obama, but the Bible says joy comes in the morning, which means during this season, my discernment must kick in, kick in from God and God alone since I'm led by the Holy Spirit to say, God, what do you require of me to do? Because, see, I'm not ran by the government. See, a lot of people are blaming the government and, and President uh, Obama right now for things going on in their own lives. But let me tell you something. Dealing with family values, dealing with this and dealing with that, I tell people all the time, 
If you're looking for a president to establish family values, your priorities are messed up bad because your, your family values do not start in the government, nor do I look for a president who can help me or can, who can come into my own family and establish this on their own. That's not scriptural. That's a, that's a, that's a side of you that is, uh, that is lazy to do. You are called, the Bible says it begins in the house of the Lord. You got to realize your family values start within your home, not anywhere else. Your family values start in your home. Judgment begins in the house of a God, which the Bible says, no, you're not, you're the temple of God. So the family values and, and, and everything else starts with inside this temple, not with the president. And so therefore, your discernment must say this. I've got to discern what does God want for me during a time of crisis? What does God want for me when maybe the president has a good name or a bad name or good ratings or bad ratings? So you might say, well, why are you discussing the government and president when it comes to discernment? Because you have got to know true spiritual discernment does not rest or rely on the outward appearance of man. The Bible talks about that man looks on the outside. God looks on the inward, in, inside of us. So true discernment must start from within. And if you're in a season of famine, well, he, here it says here, there's a time for this and a time for that. If I'm in a season of famine, I can't be like Adam and blame Eve. Hello. I can't be like someone else and blame my problems on someone else. I have to go inwardly and seek the Christ within to ask for true discernment to say, God, what can I I do in this situation? You know, what can I do when I've lost my job? What can I do, God, when I'm going through a hard time and a hard battle and a hard struggle in my life? What can I do, God? I need to know what season and what time I'm in to know how to counteract that and move not against God, but with God. See, you move against God when you come against your president. Listen to me now. The Bible talks about David and Saul, and Saul had a major issue. Uh, let's put it another way for those who are in the self-help motivational world. He had an identity crisis, okay? He had low self-esteem. So Saul had an issue there in his life, but David recognized the principles of government, recognized the principles of the government of God to say, look, I'm not coming against this man of God. I'm not touching his anointing. So see, you've got to realize, even though he was out to kill David, David said, I recognize government authority. I recognize priority. I know how to prioritize what's first, what's second, and what's third. I have true discernment from God to say, uh, you know what, I'm not touching his anointing. My natural side would say, go after him, get him, blame him, talk bad about him, dirty, you know, dirty his name up because he's hurting your life. See, you hear what I'm saying? Flesh tells me to do that, but the nature of maturity from the sons of God uh, point of view inside of me says this, touch not that anointing, do the government no harm, pray for them, know strategically what season you're in to know what to do for them and what to do for yourself. See, I am the kind of person, I teach this, and I try to walk it as well, and that is this, whatever I go through, I learn from. No matter who it's from, God, the devil, maybe it's something I cause upon myself. Learn from all your situations. I didn't say the mistakes that you might have made. You might have been in a situation of a crossfire where something just happened to you and you didn't have anything to do with it. But still, but still, how many know Joseph didn't throw himself in the pit? His half-brothers did. But through all of that, Joseph could have rallied and could have thrown up a sign and said, let's get the brothers, let's vote against the brothers, let's have you know, this poll and vote, vote against the half-brothers. No, he didn't care about flesh and blood. He didn't even care what happened to him. He didn't moan and complain and gripe and say the government should have been protecting me and my rights for my brothers would not have thrown me in the pit. No, he said, you know what? God turned all things around for my good. What, what you meant for my harm, in fact, it didn't even say the devil. It says, what you meant for my harm, God turned it around for my good. And look what God did to him. So in this next season of your life, know the timings of God by having spiritual discernment. Because discernment's not natural, it's spiritual. Have this discernment of God to know what to do with what you have. What to do in the situation you're presently in. What do I do in my family situation when I'm doing bad financially? Do I start a business right now when the economy is bad? Uh, what do I do towards my president knowing that he's doing things that I might not agree with? Or maybe what do I do when in this situation? Here's what you do. You pray. 
You have spiritual discernment and not react to what is going on or what you're told to do. Your flesh will always tell you, rebel, come against, because you have to defend God. That's not God. God says, have discernment. Let my spirit lead you, and he will show you the way. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. So here's what I want to do for a moment. I want to pray for each one of you. We're all going through the same situation right now in our lives. I want to pray for you to have good discernment. And let me also tell you this. True discernment always revolves around love. Always revolves around love. God is love. So use good, wholesome, healthy discernment to know what to do. Am I in a situation of my life to know from business to ministry to family what to do? Sure, I'm human. But I'm praying every day to make the right decisions through God, to ask God, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? So I want to pray for each one of you. So each one of you that is listening from the blog to Twitter to Facebook to XP Media Identity Network and all the other social networkings we do out there, social media, I want you to extend your hands right now. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, or Charismatic. I don't care if you're Atheist or Buddhist. Extend your hands. I want to pray for you right now because God loves you with an everlasting love. Father, right now, I just pray for wholesome, correct discernment in Jesus' name. I pray right now through the airwaves, Father, you would give these people strategic planning and discernment from the heavens to draw everyone, humanity, closer back to you, God. And Lord, give them discernment to know where to go, what to do with what they have. And Father, if they don't have the funds or the tools to know what to do in the next season, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that by the discernment of God that you will begin to give them the tools, Father. No good thing will you withhold, Father, from those that walk uprightly. So I pray right now you give them peace that surpasses all that natural understanding. Give them your mercy. Give them your grace and give them your love, Father. So I pray right now for the sons of Ishakar anointing to come upon each listener, each per person listening and watching me in Jesus mighty name I speak discernment correct godly loving discernment in Jesus mighty name amen now I believe you just got an impartation here's what I want you to do as you watch this broadcast write into us here at identitynetwork.net let us know if you sense the power of God moving in your life through this video broadcast let us know how we can serve you better and how we can love on you uh, better in the future Here's what I want to tell you real quick. We just have just launched recently our School of the Prophets Course 101. We have many more courses to come in the future. This course is a six-week course. We've already had some testimonies of people writing into us uh, that says, man, this changed my life. One lady wrote in even just last week and said, I finished the course. I've already been through two other School of the Prophets in the past, but this one definitely takes the cake. This one has changed my life and has given me the tools of what I need in my life. So I want to tell you right now, pray about it. We have a special introductory price right now. Basically, the course teaches you prophetic consciousness, which means how to move in the mind of God to learn how to prophesy. We talk about how prosperity and prophecy go hand in hand. Did you know that? I can prove to you from the Old Testament to the New Testament how believe God's prophets, so shall you what? Prosper. You never can hear the voice of God and, not, and God not prosper you. Because when you're in the perfect will of God, listening to the voice of God, God will say, I'm going to prosper you. The voice of God is full of the wealth of God naturally and spiritually for you. We talk about the different realms and levels and dimensions of, of the prophetic realms of God. We talk about so many different things uh, concerning prophecy, prophets, but most importantly, the course will edify you and bring you to a place where you know the voice of the Good Shepherd. My prayer for each one of you is that you know uh, how to hear the voice of God for yourself, that the Spirit of God can lead you. So if you're having problems, or maybe you just want to get fine-tuned in hearing the voice of God, check it out, identitynetwork.net. The School of the Prophets banner is right there on the home page. You get a workbook, a book, 14 teaching CDs, a DVD, uh, laminated cards that tell you what to do when you receive a prophetic word, uh, another card that tells you what to do, how to give a word. Uh, we have a syllabus full of questions. We have my brand new book in, this, in the course. Amazing. Once you get finished, my staff and I will grade your papers. We'll send them back to you along with your certificate of completion to where you, have know, you know you have graduated from the School of the Prophets here at Identity Network. Have a wonderful day. Check us out on the web. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today.